So let's go over a very important muscle when it comes to both temporomandibular dysfunction, but also headaches, and just general problems in the region of the ear. This is the lateral pterygoid. Why this is so important is because there's actually a section of the muscle that connects into the articular disc. And if this gets tight and contracted, it has a tendency to act, cause anterior displacement of that disc. So let's get on, let's talk a little anatomy first. So let's go over the anatomy of the lateral pterygoid. It's quite a deep structure. Let's remove the masseter muscle here. I love these models. And let's actually flip over here and go underneath and we'll see the uh, medial pterygoid and the lateral pterygoid is way up here. Now, if we look at this structure, we will see that the lateral pterygoid, basically its origin is the, it has, well, first of all, it has two heads and the lateral of the two heads, the upper head attaches to the greater wing of the sphenoid bone and the lower head originates from the surface of the lateral plate of the sphenoid bone. I think I had that straight. Now, when it comes to the insertion, the two heads converge, come together to insert into the pterygoid fovea on the front of the neck of the mandible or the mandibular condyle. Now, the lateral pterygoid muscle it has its innervation is the superior and lateral part of the inferior divisions that are innervated by a branch of the buccal nerve. The medial part of the lower head is innervated by a branch that comes from the anterior trunk of the mandibular nerve. Now, it has quite an interesting action. There is some controversy in the literature about the lateral pterygoid actions. What most authors agree on is that the lateral pterygoid muscle opens the mouth, causes mandibular depression and contralateral excursion, especially while chewing food. Another function they've noted in the literature is for the lateral pterygoid is decreasing tension on the uh, temporomandibular disc by keeping it, it positioned beneath the condyle. The lateral pterygoid contraction creates a forward tension on the disc and the neck of the mandible. Really interesting muscle. So let's go over palpation of the lateral pterygoid. Now I just want to mention that we're treating the lateral pterygoid because the fascial connections are so strong in this area between the lateral and medial pterygoid, we're actually going to affect multiple structures in the area. Okay, so Mickey, I'll get you to open your mouth there a bit. And with this one, if you actually deviate your jaw a little bit towards me here, I'll be able to reach a little bit. So I'll go on the upper teeth here and I'll go way inside here. Okay, are you okay there? Yeah. Right up to the phobia right there. Okay. So if I just go on the area and gently massage the area, you're going to feel that there. Now, if I actually start applying a little bit of pressure on the outside here, there, okay. Take my finger away. You feel that there? And then if I put my finger there, you feel even more, don't you? A lot more. So we get in there, move that around. And you're probably going to want to do three, four passes here, but slow right down. Do not move fast in this area. And you might even want to just hang out of that one point, point there just a little bit. Now, just move your jaw a little bit to the lateral side again, and then in a little bit. Lateral. And in. Lateral. There we go. Yeah. And in. So, I want to talk about the fascial connections a little bit here. And if we actually go to a point which is just anterior to the tragus, there's an acupuncture point here. And this is small intestine 19. Open your jaw a little bit there, Mickey. You feel that depression right there, how it mm -hmm. just dips right in immediately? Yeah. Okay, if you actually work this area a little bit here, this can relieve a lot of tension all around the lateral pterygoid. You feeling okay there? Yeah. Kind of a weird feeling though, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so open and close your jaw. Not too fast, not too fast. Okay, open again. Get in there. There's another point if I just move forward here a little bit, and this will be stomach seven. Now, what's really interesting is if you do a combination of both these points, or you don't feel that one much, do you? No. No, no. Getting in there. So if you work this area here, and a person has a problem with sinuses, they have tinnitus, uh, they're having headaches, a number of things, this will actually help to relieve a lot of tension in the area. Let's go back to this point again, open your jaw. Yeah, that one really drops on. Okay. These are 
two very, very powerful points. And this can have an effect both on uh, the TMJ in terms of disc position, jaw pain, um, wide variety of things, but some really interesting correlations fascially here too is that we look at trigger point referral. If you have a trigger point in the neck, it may refer directly into the lateral pterygoid and you'll continue to have pain in that region until you actually resolve some of the issues with the cervical spine. So keep this in mind, everything is connected, very high levels of neurological input. So it's not